What's good, Moss Hunters and Moss Hunnies, Duggars and Diggettes, and everyone in between? It's your boy, Dak908, aka the Digger Dugger. Anyway, today we're actually playing more Moss Hunter World for a particular good purpose. Today we're looking at Art Tempered Nergagante. Now, first, let me say, guys, I absolutely did not know that he released the same time they did the Ice Porn trailer. Like, it wasn't until like four days later that someone was like, hey, Dak, did you know they have Art Tempered Nergagante out? I was like, what? I was like, oh, snap. So, that's my bad, okay? That's like the reason why that there is a four day gap between, um, well, the trailer coming out and me even knowing that this monster was even a thing. And then, you know, work got in the way to where I couldn't just make the video off the top. But regardless, the video's here, so let's talk about them. So, first things first, thing you need to understand about Arc Temper Nergigante is that they actually give us a little bit of help. The developers, they give us a little bit of help, they spawn him in the first area. Now, the cool thing about that is because we have two boulders to drop on top of his head. The prime way to do this though, I would recommend, put him to sleep, let one of the boulders fall on, heck, if you can put him to sleep twice in one area, which I've tried to do, uh, pretty difficult to do, but if you can put him to sleep underneath a barrel, a barrel, excuse me, a boulder, drop the boulder on top of his head for that extra damage, and then blow his face up while you do it. While you do it. Now, if you could do the same thing again on the other boulder, that's the maximum damage you can get off those boulders in that area for essentially, well, for free. So. If you can do such a thing, I would totally recommend that you go for it. In this particular run, I didn't do it, but I'm sure that in post, I will show you guys how we did, at least for one. Because, you know, I usually do these conversations off the top of my head. I don't look at the gameplay. I just tell you what I know, and then we go from there. Now, outside of him fighting him in there, what you really need to understand about Arctic Mergigante is that he is... He's not like regular Nergigante, obviously, because regular Nergigante, he... Yes, he hit hard, but he had, like, no health. You can fight... Nergagante by yourself solo and without struggling really and do it in like less than 10 minutes it was free I was so surprised when I fought him for the very first time and beat him in less than 10 minutes I was like wow that was 100% free this time around he has that arc tempered health the health that he has I think is around like 75,000 when you're in multiplayer or something like that some ridiculous numbers pretty pretty high up there but outside of him having additional health he does hit a lot harder. He already hit hard to begin with. He hits a lot harder. He actually comes in here with, I believe, two new moves. One is a 360 spinning tail sweep thing. And actually, that might be an old move thing because I don't fight him ever. But uh, it's definitely moves you watch out for. The 360 tail spinning move will kill you in like one shot. It's done it to me. It's done it to a bunch of friends. So it, first, he'll slam the tail down and then spin it. If you see him slam the tail down and you're not actually in the, the zone of the tail slam, you should probably dive or block right afterwards because he's probably going to hit you with the tail spin. The tail spin is the dangerous stuff. It's slow, kind of like Tiger's tail spin, but it does incredible amounts of damage. Now, outside of that, he has what I'm referring to as the quick dive. You know how he'll roar and then jump in the air and then like float her a little bit and then like slam down? And out of the slam, he could do a head slam into spikes coming out. He has a newer attack where it's just him diving really quickly. Not a whole lot of like bravado in between. It just happens, and it hits essentially 50 to 60 percent of your health off the top. 50 to 60 for free. Uh, he there's certain instances. It actually happened to me when I was soloing him, where he did it three times in quick succession. By quick succession, I mean quick dive, quick dive, quick dive. I blocked all three of them and got chipped out and died. Okay, so it does lots of damage and has lots of chip. So speaking of chip, if you are going to be blocking some of his attacks. You might want to bring some guard up for one so that we can block the dive attacks. And two, he does massive amounts of chip damage. So even if you can block the dive into the head slam into spikes, you probably don't want to. Because I would much rather you put your weapon away and then do a, 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 a Superman dive out of the way. So that way you're not actually taking that chip damage because... Yes, you might wake up and get hit with something. Maybe you might not. Maybe you can just get back up and go right back into guarding, but you don't really want to block too many of those attacks. You can block that attack, that full attack, the dive into head slam, into spikes once. If you even have any more stamina or if you even have any health, odds are you're going to have very small amounts of health. So the damage he does on these dive attacks is the thing that you really should watch out for if you're going to be lancing. You want to forward advance. If, you're, if you see him roar, he flutters in the air a bit. Get as close to his tail as possible before he slams down because there's a certain angle he has to dive at. And, and if it's too close to his body or too close to him, he can't dive and hit you properly at that angle. 
Now, you have to be super careful, though, that if you get close enough, but not too close, that he can actually cross you up. Meaning, you'll be blocking forward, but because he hits at that... It's a very small sweet spot, but because if he hits at that tiny angle, if you're blocking forward, the game will say, well, you're supposed to be blocking backwards now. And you'll still get hit. It happened to me. I was mind effed. It blew me away. I was so upset. So, to the, the big takeaway from all this. Big dive into head slam and the spikes, even if you're blocking, does ungodly amounts of damage. I mean, I've not seen anyone survive the whole debacle unless they blocked it themselves. The quick dive does 50 to 60% damage off your health for free. Now, I will say 50 to 60 because I had 180 health when I was doing my runs with him. I had two health points as opposed to three, making it even 200. So with my additional 30, I'm going to say if you had 150 and I was left like, let's say maybe 80, you're gonna lose math, 100 health. So yeah, you'll have like a third of your health left, maybe if you block it with 150 health. So there you go, watch out for it, it hurts a lot. And his big uh, tail slam with the spin is a pretty damaging attack as well. So now that we have the things you should totally watch out out of the way, let's look at the things that you'll probably be rewarded with if you successfully encounter my man and come out with the W. So once blessed with success and you decide to make the armor, once you have enough tickets, you're going to be blessed with the full set anyway of four points to attack, two into agitator, two into maximite, excuse me, maximal might, <laughs> one in a part breaker and one in the stamina surge. And of course you're gonna get haste and recovery as is, you know, his set bonus. Now another cool thing you look at is the armor itself. The armor is Nergagante when he's full hardened. If you see the uh, spikes on his back or on the body is a completely black and it's hard and stuff. Now the skills as you're to see aren't super imposing, but the thing to take away from this is the slots. Each piece of gear comes with tons of slots on the armor and allows you to mix and match, do a lot of great stuff. Now the biggest dope thing to take away from this is the legs, giving you three points to attack and two two slots, two double slots I guess you could say, in the legs, which is 100% dope. The best thing to take from this and a lot of people are gonna use it in the new meta when it comes to making their mix sets. Now outside of that, of course, you're gonna get blessed with the layered armor and this one is just Ryu from Street Fighter. Truth be told, not gonna lie to you, hugely bummed, but if anything, when you look at it, it's more so just a flex, I mean, you're wearing Ryu layered armor. The only way to get it is to actually complete the Arctimeter Gigante stuff so you can kind of look cool when you do it. Because honestly, since it's a layered armor that you can't just mix and match piece around, it's not as versatile, it's not as cool. I mean, I guess Ryu's cool and everything, but seeing him in this game completely breaks my Monster Hunter immersion. But some people like it, some people don't. That's what you're going to actually get if you decide to actually, if you decide, pff, if you actually end up beating him. Uh, so... Pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. I like the armor, it's nice. Um, I'm working on making it myself. I only have one piece made. I have two tickets. I need uh, one, two, three, four, four more tickets? Five more tickets. I need five more tickets because I want to make the layered armor too. So I have my work cut out for me. But now that's all out the way. The last thing for me to tell you about Arc, Arc Temper Nergagante is this. What you're going to need when you go to fight him. Now, I made an Arc Tempered Nergagante set where I just, I fight him. It's my anti-Arc Tempered Nergagante set. And the main skill to take from this is Mind's Eye, Health Boost, and whatever skill that you need as whatever you are. So, for me, I'm looking at Guard. I gave myself 7 points in the defense simply because whatever, I just wanted more points of defense. I wanted at least 500 defense when I fought him, for sure. So with 500 defense, 5 points in the guard to help myself guard, and guard up. If you're blocking anything, you're going to need guard up. Bring these things, okay? Outside of that, we're looking at uh, 2 points in the health boost. That came for free off the armor, but you're going to need health boost. You're going to need that additional health. These are the skills I highly recommend. He's not a monster that you really need to counter a thing with you know what i mean i also got div uh, divine blessing to help with that big damage he hits you with but it's not essentially a armor well excuse me a monster you need to counter anything with it's not like arc temper luna where the thing you had to counter was the nova and with that you need to wind proof and speed eating which was the thing that i came up with it was actually really cool and it's not like um uh arc temper valid where you absolutely emphatically needed the resistances to the, to the smoke that he gave off of he himself is just you fighting him and him dealing lots and lots of damage. 
a lot of the times when you come into contact with them, you're just going to have to play your absolute best. You're going to have to be 100% spot on because there's not one thing that he actually has that's about him that you really can counter outside of just knowing when and how to move when he does these ridiculous attacks. So if you're coming to think that there was going to be a super cool secret set to this, there really isn't. It's just essentially the Golden Hero will do everything you're super comfortable with and bring uh, some noteworthy skills like health boost and defense if you need that extra little boost in there. I would honestly say if you're not blocking, I would probably want to run Evade Window. Max out Evade Window, see how you go with that so that way you can probably dodge roll out of the dive or dodge roll out of like all this madness that he actually has out there. This will probably help you out a lot better than most of the other skills I could actually recommend you to actually do. So that's my skill recommendation for you. But outside of that, let's talk about the la the last bit arc nugger arc. Ugh, I hate this name. It's so it's so much in your mouth. Pause. What I would recommend to do: bring either thunder or dragon. Thunder is elemental we uh, is elemental weakness. This main one anyway. But when it look when I look back at it, the best thunder weapons are probably the arc temper goat butter joints. So if you have one of those, run it. And if you don't, you're probably gonna go in here with whatever has the most raw for you. And that's usually Devil Joe. And Devil Joe is a very common weapon to actually have simply because it's rare 7 and you get 2 augments. Those 2 augments are probably going to be filled up by health, which is totally fine. Hit him, get health back. It's, it's, it's a free win-win situation. High attack, high health. But if you're going to run that, if you can get Handicraft in there to where your Devil Joe weapon has white sharpness, that'll do it. That'll do it, Pig. That'll definitely do it. It's going to be the things you really, really need because that additional damage is going to help a lot more. Because it has the negative uh, to affinity, you're going to want as much damage as possible. If you can do it, sure. But if you can't, it's not a huge deal. I didn't do it, and I probably won't do it because it's kind of an expensive skill. But if you're a person who just needs to have handicraft, like I just need to have guard, then I would totally think about doing that. Uh, a good substitute, like I said, is the goat butter joints. Like if you have a really nice um, spark weapon. Or if you're a lance like me and you have that 600 Thunder Lance or even the Kajar, the Arc Tempered one, uh, it'd be a very, very, very good weapon to have and, and use to fight him. Or you can use Status. Status is always a welcome addition here. So that's my recommendation when it comes to weapons and everything. But other than that, I would say this. Last thoughts. Last thoughts on Arc, Arc Tempered Nergigante. You're going to need to play your absolute best. Okay, this is it's probably the reason why they decided to put him last. Out of all the Arc Temper monsters, he's probably the toughest one I had. But again, for me, the toughest and one of the easiest. I'll explain. I am a Lancer through and through. Blocking is what I do. But I can block all his attacks. However, well, I probably said that wrong. But when he dives, he destroys my blocking capabilities. However, I can block all of his normal attacks. It makes a bit of a conundrum for me as a Lancer. I have to play even better Lance game than I've ever had to before. Fighting him up until he does the spam with the dives is pointless to me. It's like falling asleep, just block and keep moving. But once he starts throwing that stuff out, it's very, very difficult for me because I don't have any mobility. As a regular user, be it um, Long Sword or Insect Lever or something like that, you have to be real nice with the dodges. You have to react, react to the quick dive and the big dive and figure out what you're going to do outside of those things. Now, like I said before, those three attacks, the quick dive, the big dive, and the big turly uh, spinny around tail slam thingy are his three main attacks you need to completely watch out for. As someone who's probably not guarding, to get around two of those is kind of easy. The the big dive, because you can kind of see it coming, and the spinny tail thingy, because it's actually kind of slow on it coming out and you can probably react to it, but the quick dive is going to be something that's going to be quite difficult to actually react to because it's so quick and does so much health. Well, excuse me, so much damage. So, my advice to you, other people <laughs> is evasion window run it please you're probably thinking that you're weird why would i do that i've never ran the skill before but g give it a go give it a go if i had to sit down and recommend one skill to actually combat to basically make an anti-set for to counter it would be evade window he hits really really hard and that's his main thing how do you counter getting hit hard how about not getting hit at all okay so there we go Bring yourself your elements of resistances or whatever weapon you're super comfortable with in fighting the Arc Temper monsters. I've been using the Devil Joe Lance literally only to fight Arc Temper monsters, so that's my weapon of choice. Uh, you guys might have something different, but whatever you're comfortable with, whatever weapon you're comfortable with, if you're blocking, remember, guard up. You're gonna need it. And Constitution if you can grab it. 
If you're not, I recommend Evasion Window. But with that being said, everyone, that's pretty much all I can really tell you about Arctempreneur Gigante. He's a very tough fight. They they put him last for a reason. He's tough. He's very tough. He's tough for me, and he's probably tough for a lot of people out there. Um, with some with some luck, you'll probably get the fight done in about 20, 25 minutes. That seems to be the average rate. Faster people have been getting it done in less than 20. The fast I've seen was like sub uh, 15 or something like that. I actually think my man Soji did it in like 12 minutes or something like that. But all in all, that's what I have for you guys. Hopefully you guys found this video relatively informative. If you did, let me know. If you didn't, contact me in the comments. Say, Dak, I don't understand. Talk to me and I will talk to you in the comment section. But with that being said, everyone, it's been your boy Dak908, aka the Dig Dug himself. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Take care.